Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now today's episode, we're going to take a look at an interesting question that comes up far more than one would expect on the internet in places like Reddit. If you were to get a credit card, apply and get approved for a credit card and have it mailed to you, what happens if you don't activate it, just ignore it, shove it under the bed like it never happened? Well, that's what we're going to break down today. So of course, if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead, press the subscribe button and let's get to work. Now, we all know how this works. Generally, you apply and get approved for a credit card. They mail it to you like a week or two, something like that. It's got a sticker on the front that you call a phone number. It's automated. You activate the credit card. You're good to go. You can start using it, earning your rewards, right? Pretty simple. Now, why would you not want to activate this? Well, the spirit or the context of the question where this usually comes from is usually someone's applied for a credit card somehow mistakenly. I mean, I guess it could happen. Either you're messing around with like a pre-approval screen or it's an in-app based thing like maybe the Venmo card, for example, and you think you might have one more screen left. You just want to see, you know, what, uh, you know, what you're going to get, potentially what you gonna be approved for. And then all of a sudden you click one too far and you're approved for the card. You didn't really want it. You see a lot on annual fee cards as well. You know, hey, I, you know, I didn't really do my due diligence. I didn't realize this thing had a $250 annual fee and I had to pay it up front. Maybe there was a better offer or something like that, what have you, right? Um, so that's kind of the context, right? So, you know, the short answer is ignoring it's probably not the best move and it's not really going to make it just go away. So if we start from the beginning and walk through the process um, to answer this question. Again, really quick here, you know, when you get approved for a credit card, that issuer, that lender is going to do a credit inquiry and that's going to show up on your credit report as just someone looked into your credit. That doesn't go away. That's almost instant, you know, when they do the credit inquiry. If you have credit monitoring services through any of the banks or other paid services, you know, within seven seconds or moments of applying for that card, you're going to get a bunch of different notification emails because they've made that credit inquiry. So that's not going to go away. You can't walk that one back. It's, what's done is done. They needed to access your credit and they used it. So it's so it's valid, right? So then the next step is they're going to mail you the credit card if you got approved. And so, you know, just for thoroughness sake, why do you even have to activate this? Well, I've read some folks who think, you know, you don't actually have to activate the cards and you can start using them. I've never actually tried. I don't think that's true. It shouldn't be true because, you know, it's a security concern. It's actually not that hard to just walk up to someone's mailbox and just take their letters. It's actually like surprisingly easy and surprising in general, the amount of trust we put in just putting things on our porch or putting things in the mailbox. Not old school where you've got the mail slot on your door, but you just the mailbox out by the curb, right? So if they were, if issuers were just sending you cars that were already hot and ready, um, that would be a problem because people would probably steal them far more. But now because you have to get the card, activate it, which of course requires you to enter in the card number and then usually maybe last for your social security, um, you have to get a set of pen and then usually they'll either want your phone number or they'll verify because you're calling from the same phone that they have on file. So it's a security con- um, security concern and you know overall it's, it's, it's good that it's in place, right? So the idea here that people are having is, well, I got the card, and if I don't activate it, it will just disappear. And that's not really how that works, because what they're trying to avoid usually is having this credit card report to their credit, having another open account for one reason or another. Now, again, hard pulls and opening new accounts really aren't that big of a deal, honestly. I mean, if you look at the FICO wheel, you can see the breakdown here. I mean, your biggest ones are payment history, length of credit history isn't that big. It's basically utilization. How much do you owe? And do you make your on-time payments? Those are the biggest factors. So opening a new card here or there, not a big deal. Having a new card or account post to your credit also not that big of a deal, but that's fine. So, you know, if you got this card and you didn't want it for whatever reason, you know, if you never activated it, then what's likely the most, what would, what would most likely happen is eventually that issuer would just close the account for inactivity. But that's only true, I would believe, of no annual fee credit cards or a custom cash, a double cash, something like that, an active cash. Now, if it's an annual fee card, you know, the thing you have to remember is, number one, that annual fee posts, you know, within the first billing cycle. Usually, you know, a few days to a week after activating that card, your annual fee is posted and it will be due that next statement cycle. That is, regardless if you activate it or not, they're going to charge that because you took the card and you agreed in the card member agreement that you would pay 95, 125, whatever the annual fee is up front, and that's going to be due no matter what. I also don't know that I've ever seen issuers deactivate or, or yeah, deactivate annual fee cards because if nothing else, they can keep billing you one time a year and you still owe it and technically 
and a lot of cards do go inactive you know and could be close if you don't use the card for a year or two years or something like that but because it's always got one charge on it a year uh you'll they'll probably still keep it going so that's another important thing to do if you're getting a card and you're like i don't want this anymore if it's an annual fee like you have to address it because it's it's got a fee that you're responsible for now what are your what are your options here you know if you don't want it well i mean again if, if it's an annual if it's a no annual fee card Honestly, I'd say you should probably just use activate and use the card because you probably got some sign-up bonus for doing it that you could potentially earn. You've already done the damage. You already got the credit inquiry. You might as well use it. But if you really didn't want a new account to post to your credit, well, the, the banks are under no obligation to report information to the credit agencies being Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. Now, generally, they all report, you know, for the most part, people do want to build credit history and things like that. And usually there is a delay. Um, you know, it'll take maybe a month or something like that for a new account to officially show up on your report. Because again, a new credit card account is different than a credit inquiry. The credit inquiry is there. It's not going anywhere. It, it's valid and factual. The new account, it usually takes 30 or so days to actually report. Again, if you have credit monitoring services, it will still, you'll usually get another alert and say, hey, new account showed up or something like that. I suppose it's possible to call the bank and say, hey, I apply for this by mistake. I don't want it. Can you close it? Which they can close it. Um, but then also say, you know, can you keep this from reporting? If you close it fast enough, the issue here is really finding the right person who knows how to do this. I'm sure it can be done, but I think finding the right person is going to be a hassle. I don't think this is a standard go to customer service and they'll know how to withhold, you know, that one thing from reporting to the credit agencies. But because they're under the banks are under no obligation to report, um, you know, it's usually just done you know, monthly or something like that. Usually why you get monthly on-time payments report is usually just done monthly. So, you know, you could try it. It's going to be pretty tough. Again, the annual fee card, you know, I don't know that they'd refund you your annual fee the first go around. I mean, usually you're not allowed to cancel those, you know, card. You're not supposed to cancel those cards within the first year anyway. So they still might do it for you, but I would still expect you owe the annual fee on that. And of course, if you do this and, you know, even if you got the card in mistake and you never activated, if we're talking about sign up bonus rules in the future, Amex is once in a lifetime rule where you still had that card. So it counts. Even something like Chase's 24 month rules on, you know, freedom cards, you still had that card. So it counts. So I would be aware of that as well. It's also important to know that if you do go the route of trying to close this account really fast, again, you're supposed to keep credit cards open for, you know, one full year. So this could very well put you on the bad side of any issuer and, you know, have you fall underneath those, quote, gaming the system terms that they have in their terms and conditions. So that's really another reason why you might just want to keep it open and use it and get that bonus. I mean, the long story short, the answer is you can give it a go. You might be able to convince the bank. To, I'm sure they'll close it for you, but you might be able to convince them to not get it to report to an agency. But I do think it's going to be hard to find the person. So honestly, I would say the best course of action is even if you didn't mean to, take the card, use it, earn the reward, try to salvage some money out of it as best you can. You know, most cards in year number one, you're going to make money on that bonus anyways. And then in year number two, follow our cancellation video, our downgrade videos that we have on the main channel. I can link down below for you if you want. Um, so of course, you know, just be careful and apply. You know, that's that's the main thing. I, I see how it could happen, uh, you know, because they're supposed to make it an easy, seamless process to, you know, suck you in and have the barriers of least resistance. But there you go. Short answer is uh, no, not activating the card doesn't really do what you think it does. Um, so anyways, guys, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, posting content just like this every single week and right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. And of course, every single day over on ProfitableContent.com where we have the latest bank bonuses, credit card offers, and news stories. Again, question for you guys. Let me know down below. If you ever applied for a card by accident gotten a little trigger happy, what was it? How did it go? Love to get your thoughts on that. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you very soon in the next one.